What is going on, PUBG fans, and welcome to the channel. My name is Powerbang. I'll be hosting the show today. I'm a YouTuber with a couple of hundred chicken dinners in my belly so far. Check out the link in the description for my channel that covers daily PUBG action. That being said, guys, I've got 13 tips today to help you become better PUBG players and start filling up on chicken yourselves. What the heck is chicken, you might ask? Well, that's when you win a game, you get a chicken dinner. That's just how things work. Now, let's get straight into tip number one, and that is to plan your drop zone and get there first. You can you can determine the plane's direction and path in a number of ways. You can either wait for your player icon to appear on the minimap. You can see what direction you're looking, and that's where the plane's coming in from. Or you can look at which direction you're facing in the plane as soon as the minimap is able to be accessed, and you can simply take the opposite of that direction. For example, if you're looking northeast, that means the plane's coming in from the southwest. If you're looking south, that means the plane is coming in from the north. You guys can figure that out quickly. It will help you determine an appropriate path to jump much more quickly. You're going to want to jump to the high density loot locations to try to get geared up as soon as possible. You can find those by looking for the big city names all over the map. And as you get more familiar with the map and your surroundings, you're going to come up with some favorites that you're going to want to jump to more often than not if the plane's path allows it. Once you've chosen a destination, mark the map by clicking the mini map. Once you've done so, a marker will appear and that marker will then show an icon on your compass at the top of the screen. And that's the direction you want to focus your player as you're jumping. Try to take care of your positioning and maneuvering while you're still skydiving and not after the parachute is popped. Once the parachute has deployed, you want to fly directly down to your destination, whether it's a rooftop or a building. While you're on your way there in the parachute, that is a good time to look around with the eyeball tool to make sure that you don't have enemies that are landing near you, next to you, or even on top of you. You've got to figure out if you're going to land first or if they're going to land before you, and that's going to shape how you play the game from that point forward. That leads us into tip number two. You need to gear up quickly, and you want to make sure that you pick up the very first gun that you come across, whether it's a pistol shotgun or other subpar gun it does not matter having a gun is much better than having fists when you come across your first enemy especially if it's an unexpected first encounter where maybe you didn't spot all of the people flying in right behind you once you guys find better weapons obviously ditch the pistol or ditch the shotgun that you picked up pick up the assault rifle instead but make sure that you're looting up quickly being super efficient with what you take and pick up that first gun super important tip number three is along the same looting lines. You want to make sure that you're taking only what you need. Be super efficient. Don't take ammo and attachments for guns that you don't even have. Or, don't keep the ammunition or attachment from guns that you have dropped in favor of others. If you drop and pick up a shotgun and a, a choke and all kinds of 12-gauge shells, you want to make sure that you ditch those once you pick up an assault rifle to replace the shotgun. The attachments and the ammo will not clear out of your inventory and that inventory space is valuable for other things, such as boosts or med kits. You want to make sure that you have the space available for the items that are actually going to benefit you. Now, once you've dropped, cleared your immediate area, looted up a little bit, and you're starting to get ready to actually defend yourself or even fight, you want to take note of tip number four, and that is to pay attention to the safe zone. Open up your mini map, check the white circle, and if you are outside of that first white circle, you know that you need to move to get to it before that first timer counts down that's right below your mini map and the safe zone starts to collapse. If it collapses and you're outside side of it and you're in the blue zone, you will start to take periodic damage, which is not super helpful if you're trying to win the game. Make sure that you're moving inside the safe zone at all times. There's a couple different, more advanced strategies for playing the safe zone. We will cover those in future episodes as well. Tip number five is to always move while you're out in the open. If you're in line of sight of anywhere where you could potentially be shot, make sure that you're a moving target and not a sitting duck. For players like myself that like to snipe from long range, I'm always looking for that player that stands still while looting a supply crate or looting an enemy, or maybe just looking off in the direction through his scope as well. If he stands still for a moment. That head is getting in my crosshairs and I'm going to blow it up. So make sure you're staying very active and moving while you're looting and while you're running around. Jump here and there. You want to make sure that you are not an easy target. That being said, if you are in cover or if you've decided to go prone and lay in the grass, you want to be as still as possible while you're in cover. If you're in a building, staying still will keep you from making noise that may alert enemies to your presence. And in the grass, obviously, those visual cues are super apparent 
when you're scoping in on a, a hillside and all of a sudden you see something move, that'll cause an enemy to look in closer to your area and ultimately find you and kill you. Tip number six is to use the eyeball tool, just like you did when you were dropping in with your parachute. It's super helpful when you're running around the map as well. Once you've determined where you're trying to run or drive, you want to look around with the eyeball tool so you can do a couple of things. You can scan the area to see if there are any potential threats watching you, and you can also sneak up on people by looking at them, planning your attack, and they don't ever know that you actually see them. So use that to your advantage. Make sure to use the eyeball tool as you're driving around. Don't just tunnel vision on a target or an enemy or a destination and forget to check your flanks. Now eventually footsteps and gunshots and cars driving by are going to start to fill up the battlefield. You're gonna hear sounds. And tip number seven is to use these audio cues to locate nearby enemies. This is absolutely imperative and a probably about 90% of tracking enemies, their location comes from from audio and not visual cues. Not joking here, guys. Having a stereo headset or earbuds is crucial to your success in this game. Highly recommend that you grab that audio for tracking and locating your enemies. To do this using audio alone, you want to focus your player's crosshair on the direction where you think the sound is coming from. Make sure the gunshots or the footsteps or the car sounds, that the audio is balanced from a volume perspective in your left and your right ears. You want to make sure that it sounds the exact same loudness, and once you've done that you're going to be looking pretty much right at where the sound originated from. Now the volume of the shots of the footsteps, that is going to tell you how close the target is, whether it's super far away or if it's right next to you. Tip number eight expands upon the same process of tracking and locating your enemies when there are audio cues going off in the game. If you hear gunshots, put your crosshair where you think they're coming from, but immediately put your eyeballs, your visuals on the mini map. Look at the mini map and there's going to be an orange radar blip that pops up up on that mini map and that is going to tell you the general direction of where those shots came from now if you can combine your hearing and your seeing so that both of these senses are telling you the same direction there's a great chance that you're going to find your enemy in that direction now you can also use your mini map to plan routes all you have to do is look at it tap it to open it up make it big you can pinch it to zoom in or out and then once you've done so you can mark the map just like you did on the flight in to plan your routes and that'll again put a marker on your compass that you can track and follow at any time, making navigation a breeze. Now, once you've been in a few fights or taken some fall damage or gotten in a sticky situation in the gas and you've lost a little bit of health, tip number nine is going to come in super handy, and that's to make good use of boosts and keep your player at full hit points. You want to make sure that you're not suffering by going into fights, missing any HP at all. That is going to put your opponent at a significant advantage. There are a lot of weapons in the game that are balanced to where one or two shots may do 97 or 98 damage on a player. If you're missing three hit points and you get headshot for 98 damage, you're gonna feel pretty sad when you know you could have continued the fight, found cover, healed up if you would have just gone into the fight at full hit points. Your energy drinks and your painkillers are the most common boost to be found. Now your energy drinks work in about two minutes where the painkillers last about three minutes. Energy drinks will heal about 23% of your HP over time. So every few seconds, your health bar will tick up just a little bit. Painkillers will actually heal even more, almost 40% of your total hit point bar, and that will happen over three minutes. If you are lucky enough to find an adrenaline syringe. Adrenaline syringes will fill up your boost bar to 100% and that will heal over 80% of your health bar over five minutes. Adrenaline syringes can only be found in supply drop crates, so it's more often than not you're going to be using the energy drinks and the painkillers. Make sure you loot these items as often as you can. They're uncommon, not rare, but you always want to have a plentiful supply of boosts on your persons at all times. Tip number 10 is to use the supply drop crates to your advantage. You can do this by looting them for some of the best best weapons, armor, scopes in the game, or you can use them as bait. If you're able to get to a crate first, loot it and get a little bit away from it, you can continue to watch the crate as other players in cars and vehicles and even on foot will surely approach it to see what was in the crate and you can shoot them dead pretty easily. Or if you come up onto a crate late and it's been down for a while, you know that there's probably people in the area, you can come up on full alert and make sure that you're able to pick these guys off as they're trying to escape that danger zone of around the crate. Tip number 11 is to make use of the prone stance on your own terms. 
This means that prone is a very valuable way to hide your person and make yourself less visible. This is essentially laying down in the grass, snaking around, hiding, and attacking by surprise. That is something that is very, very effective, but it is not effective if you are not doing it on your own terms. What do I mean by that? Go prone when nobody has seen you approach an area. Don't go prone if you're being shot at. If you decide to lay down after you've already been acquired by somebody that is putting their scope on you, you are dead. They know exactly where you laid down because they're looking right at you. If you are being shot at, instead of going prone, run to the nearest cover, zigzag, jump around, make yourself a difficult target to hit, but going prone while somebody's shooting at you is essentially waving the white flag and surrendering. Unfortunately, in PUBG Mobile, there are no prisoners of war. You're just gonna die. In this game, I was able to obtain a ghillie suit and get to an area undetected, so once I went prone, I was able to sneak attack my enemies without them ever knowing where I was. Tip number 12 is to fight from cover to decrease your exposure to your enemies. People are going to be looking to take you down constantly, and if you're able to fight from behind a tree or inside of a house, yes, you might get shot, you may take some damage, but you can go behind that cover during the fight and heal up. You can even get all the way back to full health before you re-engage. That makes you a very difficult target to take down. On the contrary, if you're standing in the middle of the the open, you're stuck either running around as a free target, essentially, or going prone, and as we said in the last tip, you're just gonna get shot and killed. Fight from cover, use houses, use trees, use rocks, use embankments on terrain, use all of these things to your advantage, don't fight from the open. Tip number 13 and our last tip for today's video is to engage in battle on your terms when victory is likely, if not assured. You wanna make sure that when you're fighting your opponents that you have their head or their chest in your sights and you got a real good feeling about picking up a kill you don't want to give away your position by firing before you're ready to get that kill letting them know where you are allowing them the ability to reposition to get cover themselves to heal up so they can re-engage you make sure that you fire when you see them and don't be pressured into entering a fight especially if you think the enemy's fishing for your location and they don't exactly know where you are so as you're gonna see at the end of this game my opponent I know exactly where he is because I saw him earlier and he thinks he knows where I am based off of sound, but unfortunately I'm wearing a ghillie suit. He is wrong, he never sees me, and I'm not baited into the fight. When he finally shows himself from around the tree, I'm ready for him. Pop him right in the chest, get him in the head, and boom, winner, winner, chicken dinner. That is how it's done, ladies and gentlemen. We'll add that notch onto our belt, another chicken dinner. We're full around here, baby. If you guys are liking the tips, if you're liking the trips, make sure you subscribe to the PUBG Mobile channel. We're gonna be putting out a ton of amazing videos over the next several months that are going to help you guys become a better player and have some more fun playing PUBG Mobile. For now, I'm your host, Powerbang. I'm signing out, and I'll be with you guys next time.